Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for July 25th, 2022, around 12.30 p.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including what to expect for the remainder of the 2022 Atlantic hurricane season, what changes are happening, and what does it mean to you? Well, let's go ahead and find out. Jumping straight into everything, taking a wild look across the tropical length this afternoon, we noticed that the basin is relatively quiet for the end of July, as we would expect. We do have a few tropical waves that are moving off the coast of Africa today. However, these are not expected to really develop much, but either way, they will be moving heading westward. They will be moving westward into the tropical Atlantic, then into the Caribbean and impacting places like the Lesser Antilles and Trinidad, Tobago, Barbados, etc. with some gusty winds and heavy rainfall. But either way, uh, there is no tropical activity expected over the next five days. For the Orlando area forecast today, we have high temperatures around 92 degrees with low temperatures of about 75, 30% chance, chance of showers and thunderstorms for the day and evening tapering off uh, right around after 8 p.m. this evening. If you guys do want to see a forecast, a local forecast for your specific area, make sure to let me know in the comment section down below and I'll be making a forecast every day that is for a specific town or city. So let's go ahead and jump those in the comments below. In the East Pacific Basin, we have a tropical wave. This is now Invest Area 97E. This has moved off the coast here of Central America and into the East Pacific Basin, where additional development is likely, with development chances now progged at about 90% over the next couple of days. This will be mainly heading off towards the west and then eventually bending off generally towards the northwest and eventually uh, kind of moving out into the open tropical Pacific. If we look at the visible satellite imagery from today, we notice that the storm has definitely become a lot better organized than it was in the past couple of days. Today, we actually do have, it looks like some spin in the atmosphere, and we kind of notice that maybe a, a low level circulation is developing somewhere within this vicinity. And again, we can kind of see some of these lower level cloud features uh, were kind of blowing around uh, to the west and from basically moving from e from west to east. And that kind of confirms that we do have the potential for a closed circulation in this area. While thunderstorm activity has generally become gradually better organized. So it is safe to assume that this is well on its way to becoming our next tropical cyclone in the East Pacific Basin. The next name is Fred. And this will be moving off towards the north and west over the next couple of days. Generally speaking, this will remain uh, away from land. We can see that the general forecast calls for this to be moving off towards the, the west here, eventually northwest, but stays well away from land at this point. So no significant concerns to this uh, to really anywhere in the East Pacific at this particular time. And in the tropical Atlantic, everything is quiet for the next five days with no tropical cyclone activity expected as we progress throughout the remainder of this week. So when could things start to pick up and what to expect for the remainder of the season? Well, let's go and jump straight into the GFS forecast. This is the 60 run 850 millibar vorticity. So the spin in the answer at 5,000 feet off the ground. And we notice that again, for the remainder of this entire cycle, all the way up to August 10th, it remains relatively quiet. So that is certainly some good news. However, there's more down below the surface that we have to really look at. We have to understand why things are quiet now and when things might pick up in activity. So for that, let's go to the European forecast. And this is the European ensembles, the overnight zero Z runs. And we're looking at the 850 millibar zonal wind anomalies. So we're looking at basically departures from average from the west and east wind in the atmosphere to see what's going on. So right now, for the next about five days, we expect a gradual warming in the tropical Atlantic over the next couple of days. This actually goes to suggest that we will see the warm waters perk up once again. And that kind of coincides nicely with all of this orange in here. This indicates we have anomalous westerly wind in the low levels that is across this area. And that basically helps to induce warming across the tropical Atlantic. Now, subsequently, as we roll throughout the next couple of weeks, we notice that we're in uh, closing in really on about week one right now. And then we move out to about week two in the long range, the 11 to 15 day forecast. We notice that we have these westerly winds that continue across the tropical Atlantic, allowing for additional warming 
And in the meantime, we have all of this easterly wind going on across the subtropics, which began to induce cooling and it kind of has that opposite effect. So we notice that that's kind of what's taking place right now. And most of the main development regions should be able to warm substantially. Now, the one thing that will be kind of interesting to watch is how the moisture in the atmosphere handles itself. Now, what we're kind of looking at here is the total precipital water. So we're looking at moisture in the lower part of the atmosphere to see how moist or how dry it is. We notice that, uh, again, we, we do have some of these uh, waves that are expected to roll off into the main development region. It's still too cool up there right now. Uh, but generally speaking, we'll per have some pretty potent dry air around. Uh, and that dry air certainly will last through the next couple of weeks. This goes up to about August 3rd. Eventually after that, no, we notice that what kind of starts to happen here is we get all of this green start to appear where we don't really have a lot of this brown color. And basically what this indicates, you can kind of see all that uh, drier get filtered out and we have this moist air beginning to return across the tropical Atlantic while simultaneously you have a lot of westerly winds down here in the intertropical convergence zone and that might help to induce some spin down there to get any tropical waves going. The upper level environment also at this time again pretty favorable. Uh, we have pretty substantial easterly winds in the upper levels. This basically allows for outflow generation a little bit hostile over here in the Caribbean, but again, that's kind of, you know, to be expected for August 9th. So generally speaking, this forecast shows a pretty favorable look as we head through about August 10th. And that's when I think activity is start to certainly will start to pick up after that particular point. So who is at the greatest risk this season of seeing a tropical cyclone? Well, for that, let's go look at the simplified version of this uh, risk category here. Again, generally speaking, we this is a subject that we've been talking about over the last couple of days, but I think it needs to get hounded in because we are approaching that time where the hurricane season is certainly going to start to pick up in pretty significant order at this time. We notice that uh, one of the things that we'll kind of be monitoring is the Caribbean uh, this season and the Gulf of Mexico for potential land impacts. Again, the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico respectively are at a very high and high risk of seeing tropical cyclone impacts with a moderate risk extending across portions of the southeast U.S. and the northeast as well. And again, the northeast U.S., especially like Massachusetts, northward, about a 40 to 50 percent chance of seeing a tropical cyclone come within 25 miles of a given point this year. Uh, and then certainly, obviously, Florida and the Caribbean uh, has that risk kind of extending in there as well uh, with that very high and high risk respectively. So uh, these are two things that we're going to have to kind of continue to monitor now, what actions do you need to be taken? Well, right now, if you live in a hurricane prone area, and this goes for absolutely everybody, anybody and everybody that lives in a hurricane prone area, you need to be understanding if you live in an evacuation zone, you need to understand your evacuation zone areas. You need to understand what to do during an evacuation and you need to be preparing to evacuate. So what do I mean by prepare to evacuate? Well, you need to have all essential supplies like your basically your medications, if there is any there, uh, food, water, stuff like that. That will be essential. Extra money, um, you know, to kind of carry around. Um, you know, if you have any, if you kind of have a trailer on, on the back of the car, uh, you know, some additional gas cans, etc. Those things will be very important. If Even if you live inland, you need to be thinking about inland flooding, tornadoes, and high winds, especially here in Florida and, you know, portions of the Gulf Coast where we have very low-lying areas, uh, you tend to get storms that can come pretty far inland and, and cause some pretty substantial issues. So this is something to keep in mind as you progress throughout the remainder of the season. All right. So that being said, hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali, and I'll be talking to you guys again some more tomorrow.